All right, guys, in this video, what I want to do is talk about the easiest way for us to be able to solve quadratics, because who doesn't love easy, right? But yeah, solving quadratics can be complicated, and there might be some debate on what is going to be the easiest process, but in this video, I want to make it crystal clear what exactly is going to be the easiest way to solve a quadratic equation. Now, before we do that, let's just do a quick review of how we would solve a linear equation. Okay, these are all linear equations, because again, notice the x is just be raised to the first power. Now, when we wanted to solve these equations, what we did is what we called our inverse operation, right? we undid what was happening to the variable. Now, these are very, very, very basic problems. But the whole point I want to convey to you is to apply the inverse operation to solve for x. So there you go. You can see in this example, all I did to undo adding 2, I subtracted a 2 on both sides. To undo subtracting 2, I added a 2 on both sides. To undo multiplying by 2, I divided by 2 on both sides. And to undo divided by 2, I multiplied by 2 on both sides. So let's go and take a look at a quick quadratic and try to see how would we use our inverse operations to solve for an x there. So in this example, you can see this is a quadratic because the power of our variable is now being raised to 2 rather than 1 for our linear equation. If I wanted to solve this, I need to undo the squaring. And to undo the squaring, the inverse operation of squaring is going to be taking the square root. Now, it's very important to understand and to introduce the plus or minus. And this is where a lot of students will get this wrong. Because when we're solving a quadratic, we're going to have two solutions or one solution repeated. But it's really important to understand why we have a plus or minus in this case. Because what we have is both of these answers are going to satisfy this equation, right? Because if I had 3 squared, that's equal to 9, as well as a negative 3 squared, that is also equal to 9. So both a positive 3 and a negative 3 satisfy this equation. Whenever we introduce the square root to solve an equation, we have to include the positive as well as the negative solution. Now, there is another way that we could solve this, which would be by factoring. And if I was going to take an x squared equals 9 and I was going to solve that by factoring, what we want to do is we want to set that equal to 0. So I can go ahead and subtract a 9 on both sides. Therefore, I get an x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. And now, basically what I want to recognize here is this is a difference of two squares. So I can factor this into a x minus 3 times x plus 3. And now that we have the product equal to 0, we can go ahead and apply the 0 product property and set each one of my factors equal to 0. And now we just use our inverse operations to go ahead and solve. So I add a 3 to both sides subtract a 3 on both sides, and you can see that there are two solutions, right? Just like when we had our two solutions, when we introduced the two solutions by introducing the plus or minus, by applying the factoring method, we're able to find our two solutions. Now, as a teacher, I am also a big proponent of factoring, but it's not always the easiest way to solve a quadratic using your inverse operations are. But before we get to some examples that would be confusing by factoring, there's one last thing I want to mention to you when we're able to find the roots of our quadratic. If I have x equals 3 and x equals negative 3 are the roots of this quadratic, I can also go ahead and rewrite the quadratic equation, right? Because basically I can just now work my way backwards. So I can rewrite these as an x minus 3 equals 0 and an x plus 3 equals 0. And notice that these are the two factors that I have, right? So I can just multiply an x minus 3 times an x plus 3 right? And then that is going to equal a x squared minus 9 when you go ahead and apply the distributive property. The reason why this is important is because when we have problems that we can't factor, but we need to find the factored form, sometimes it's easiest to find the solutions using different methods and then to rewrite them in factored form. And again, the way to go from your roots to a factored form would be just following this reverse process that we did for solving. All right, so now let's go and take a look at a problem like this. In this example, I have x squared minus 12 equals 0. Now, hopefully you recognize that the fastest, best way to do solve this problem would be to use my inverse operations, right? Most students are not going to want to factor this. Now, once you have some experience with factoring, you might be able to do this because you recognize this still can be written as the difference of two squares. But for right now, let's stick with the easiest way to solve this, which would be to use my inverse operations. First thing we're going to want to do is isolate my variable. So to do that, I'm going to add a 12 onto both sides. Then I get an x squared is equal to a 12. And again, now I need to undo the squaring. So I'm going to take the square root to both sides. Remember to include the plus or minus. And what I get here is x equals a plus or minus the square root of 12. Now, again, remember, we can break up the square root of 12, right? I can rewrite that as a 4 times 3. So we could definitely simplify this to an x equals plus or minus a 2 radical 3. Now, if you wanted to look at the factored form, you could do exactly what I did up here. And basically what we'll do is we'll set each factor equal to x. Then we'll set each equation equal to 0. And these two values are going to be our factors. So therefore, now I can go ahead and multiply them to get my factored form. All 
and again, just remember if you were to actually multiply this out, if you wanted to do the math, it would simplify to an X squared minus 12. So as you can see from this problem, it's not very difficult. If you know that you're going to be taking the square root of 12 and you can simplify this and you recognize the difference in two squares relationship, it's not horribly difficult to factor, but you can see how the inverse operations is definitely going to be the easier approach. Now let's go and take a look at a different example where we can see that now my variable is being added by two, that quantity is being squared, and then I'm subtracting the 12. So again, to follow my inverse operations, what I'm going to have to do is undo my addition and subtraction first. I want to complete the outermost operations first. So I'll add a 12 on both sides. And what that's going to give me now is going to be a X plus two quantity squared is equal to 12. Now again, I'm going to take my square root and remember that's plus or minus a two radical three. So then I'll have a quantity X plus two is equal to a plus or minus a two radical three. And now I can just see though to get my X all by itself, I will just subtract a two. So therefore I get a X equals a negative two plus or minus a two squared of three. Now, if you were to try to write this in your factor form, I think you'd agree this would be kind of crazy. But again, let's go through the process of taking my roots and rewriting them as factors. So the first thing we're gonna do is set each one equal to X, then set them equal to zero. And then those are going to be your factors. Now, I'm pretty sure any of you that would say that factoring is always the easiest way to solve quadratics would definitely agree with me that this is not a problem that is easy to factor. The easiest way to solve this problem is to use your inverse operations to find the roots and then to go ahead and rewrite it in factored form. Now, if we wanted actually to expand this out, we could multiply this out, which would be kind of crazy. Or what we could also do is simply just go ahead and expand the X plus two quantity squared minus 12. So what I want you to see here is that when I do expand this, or if you wanted to multiply this out, you get an X squared plus four X minus eight, which if you think about what two numbers multiply to give you negative eight, add to give you four, that's not gonna be any rational numbers, which obviously we can tell because our roots are irrational. So while factoring is very helpful for when we have rational roots, it does pose a problem when we have our irrational roots. But there's also another type of solution of quadratics where factoring is not always going to be the easiest. Okay, in this example, we recognize here, we have an X squared plus 18, and if you're like, well, let's just use our inverse operations, right? So we'll go ahead and subtract the 18, you know, on both sides, and I get an x squared equals a negative 18. But hopefully you recognize here, we come up with a problem, right? We, when we take the square root to isolate our x on both sides, we recognize we cannot take the square root of a negative number, right? Because if I take the square root of negative x here, what I'm basically trying to say is what number multiplied by itself gives me a negative x? Well, I can't do x times x, right? That doesn't work because x times x is equal to an x squared. I also can't do a negative x times a negative x because that also is going to be a negative times a negative, which is going to be a positive. So therefore we cannot take the square root of a negative number in our real number system, but we can use our imaginary number system. Whereas I is going to equal the square root of a negative one. So now what I can simply do is I can think of this negative as like a negative one, and I can simplify the 18 as a nine times two. So therefore I have an X equals a plus or minus the square root of negative one times a nine, times a two. Now, as we simplify this radical, right, I can take the square root of a negative one, which I'm now going to use as I take the square root of a nine, which is going to be a three. And then I'm going to have to leave off the two. So I have an X equals a plus or minus a three square root of two I. Now in the previous examples, factoring a binomial probably would have been okay, but you can see how this one, it can start to get a little bit tricky to try to see oh, if I'm just gonna simply go ahead and factor this. However, now that we know that our roots, we can go ahead and rewrite this as a factored form. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, and you can see as I get them to the same side of X, seven equals zero, those are gonna be your two factors. And yeah, that would be your factored form, which is a little bit crazy mixing in irrational and imaginary numbers. Now in this example, I, the last thing I wanna do is just kind of cover again, what do we do when we have so many different operations as well as what would exactly would it look like in its factored form? So the base, best thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is actually solve this using my inverse operations. First thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is undo my addition and subtraction. Now again, I wanna do that outside the parentheses, not inside the parentheses, because you wanna follow your reverse order of operations. Now I'm going to undo the multiplying by two to isolate my expression squared.
Now I can go ahead and take the square root of both sides and hopefully recognize the right hand side is a negative nine, but using my imaginary unit i, I can rewrite that as a plus or minus three i. And then last but not least here, now just to isolate my variable x, I will just go ahead and add a two, and now I get an x equals a two plus or minus a three i. Now again, if I wanted to write this in factored form, all I'm simply gonna do is get them to the same side of x, and those are gonna be my two factors. Most students would not try to say that factoring is the easiest way to solve a problem like this, so that's why knowing this process is so helpful. So set each of these equal to x, and then set them equal to zero to go ahead and solve. Now here comes the cool answer. What does this multiply to? Because yeah, it does multiply by 2x minus 2 quantity squared plus 18. But if I was actually to multiply this out, I probably wouldn't get this answer. What is another way we can go ahead and represent that? Well, the best way I can do it is, yeah, you could multiply a trinomial times a trinomial, but who really wants to do that? Let's go ahead and expand this out and see what we get. And there you go. You can see in this problem, we'd have 2x squared minus 8x plus 26. You're probably not going to want to factor that. And even if you tried to factor it, you probably wouldn't be able to factor this in your head. That brings up a really good question because when we have quadratics that are in what we call the standard form, you know, x squared plus bx plus c or ax squared plus abx plus c, how do we solve those? Because we can do factoring, but how do we solve these problems easily when factoring is something that either we struggle with or it is not factorable under rational numbers? Well, in this next video, we'll talk exactly what you're going to want to do for those pesky problems that you cannot solve via factoring. So go ahead and check out that video now or additional examples and resources in the description below. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.